We have a coronal hole that's rotating into the Earth strike zone and the water on Mars, it may have been done in by dust towers. Those stories are more in the news this week. This forecast, sponsored in part by Eric Johansson. Check him out at Instagram.com slash Scoobist. Space weather this week remains on the quiet side. You can definitely see a few bright regions on the Earth-facing disk, including a few at high latitudes, especially in the northern hemisphere. And that is yet more signs that Solar Cycle 25 is trying to get started, but it's just not here yet. So don't expect these regions to go pop any flares or anything like that. They kind of disappear almost as rapidly as they, sh as they emerge. But it does help the solar flux. We are boosting up in the solar flux a little bit, which is good news for amateur radio operators and emergency responders. We're back in the marginal range for radio propagation. Now, on top of that, we also have a very small coronal hole that's rotating in through the Earth strike zone here over the next few days. But these coronal holes are closing pretty quickly. So don't expect much aurora photographers. If you're at high latitude, you could probably get a little bit of a show, but mid-latitudes, you're probably going to have to sit this one out. Switching to your M-flare threat meter, as you can see, the X-ray flux continues to be flatlined, and therefore, by proxy, the solar flux also continues to be pretty low. However, if you look, you can see that the floor of the, of the X-ray flux has actually bumped up a little bit. We're now just sitting just below the B floor, and this is, believe it or not, a little bit of an improvement. So we are seeing a, a little bit of the solar flux going up as well, and this is likely due to those bright regions that keep popping out and emerging on the Earth-facing disk and then receding and then more pop out and, and recede again. So it's definitely good news. It's uh, moving in the right direction. We are now sitting at a, a, the hairy edge of marginal for radio propagation, and it looks like these trends are going to continue. Switching to your solar storm conditions, as you can see, over the past week or more, we've been sitting at pretty much quiet conditions to about unsettled conditions. Now, we have had a couple coronal holes rotate in through the Earth strike zone and send us some fast solar wind, but the fast solar wind anymore just doesn't have that oomph to really bump us up to active or even storm levels. And unfortunately, the coronal hole that we're expecting to pass through the Earth strike zone here in the next day or two is going to be the same story. We'll probably bump up to unsettled conditions, but nothing like active or storm levels most likely. And this means aurora photographers, you guys at high latitudes, you're probably going to get a show, but mid latitudes, you're going to have to sit this one out. The only positive thing is that GPS users and amateur radio operators and emergency responders, these Mild storms have a tendency to stabilize that upper atmosphere, so GPS reception should look pretty good and amateur radio should get a little bit of a boost. We are deep into the dust storm season on Mars, but this year, thankfully, it has been pretty mild. Back in 2018, a massive global and long-lasting dust storm ended the Opportunity rover's mission. You can see here the views of Mars before and during this global dust storm, which lasted several months and suffocated the battery life for Moppy. If it weren't for the highest mountain peaks breaking through the dust layer, you wouldn't even be able to tell these images are from the same planet. Now, new light is being shed on the huge rising pillars of dust, called dust towers, that commonly occur during these storms. These concentrated clouds of dust are found to warm in sunlight, which heats the surrounding atmosphere and allows the dust to ride the resulting thermals up to high altitudes. This image, taken by the Marcy instrument on the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, shows such a dust tower as a yellow-white cloud located just south of Olympus Mons and just west of Valles Marineris. This tower is being lofted many kilometers above the surface, while the blue-white plumes next to it are water vapor clouds. Scientists believe the water vapor trapped in these dust towers might also be riding them like an elevator to space, where solar radiation then breaks apart the water molecules. This might help explain how Mars water has disappeared over billions of years. When a tower starts at the planet's surface, it's an area about as wide as the state of Rhode Island. But by the time the tower decays, it can form a layer of dust more than 50 kilometers above the Martian surface and be wider than the entire continental United States. Luckily, though, this dust tower near the Valley of Marineris came nowhere near the locations of Curiosity Rover and Gale Crater or Mars InSight in Elysian Planitia. In fact, currently the InSight lander reports clear and sunny skies with a high temperature of minus 21 degrees Celsius and winds out of the south-southeast at 22 meters per second. Switching to our moon, we are now passing through the first quarter phase on our way to a full moon, with the full moon being on the 12th. So you night sky watchers, if you want to catch those dim objects in the sky, it's going to be a bit tough. So make sure you check your local rise and set times. 
So what else does our sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A. It's our far-sighted monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun pretty much from the side. And when you look at Stereo's view, you can see a couple coronal holes. They're kind of weak coronal holes, but you can definitely see them by their darkness. Now that first one is kind of like a finger-like coronal hole. That's the one that's going to be rotating in through the Earth's strike zone here in the next couple days. But then there's one that follows it. And that coronal hole that's kind of in the center of the disk right there, that one has actually brought us to storm levels in the past. But the last time we saw this, about a month ago, when it rotated through the Earth strike zone, wow, the solar wind just wasn't fast enough from it to bring us up to storm levels. And most likely that's going to be the same case here as well. So what it means is that for you uh, aurora photographers at high latitudes, you're going to get multiple chances here over the next couple weeks to catch some more aurora. But people at mid-latitudes, well, I hate to say it, but we might have to wait to the new cycle in order to catch more aurora shots. Switching to your solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating a bit of fast solar wind from a coronal hole that's rotating in through the Earth's strike zone, but we're not expecting the fast wind to be all that powerful. So at high latitudes, NOAA is expecting unsettled conditions with up to about a 15% chance of a minor storm, which might, as we roll through the weekend, jump up to maybe a 20 to 25% chance of a minor storm. Now, mid-latitudes, we're really expecting unsettled conditions with only about a 10 to 15% chance of active conditions, but most likely we're really not going to get a chance for aurora down to mid-latitudes. It's most likely going to stay at high latitudes, and so your aurora photographers at mid-latitudes, you're just going to have to sit this one out. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, everything is still in the green when it comes to big solar flares. We have a spotless sun right now, and that means we have no risk for radio blackouts, and that should make you GPS users on Earth's day side very happy. However, we do have a bunch of little bright regions that kind of poke their heads out on the Earth-facing disk and then disappear and then poke their heads out again, and this is boosting the solar flux. We are now back into the low end of marginal range for radio propagation. So you emergency responders, you should be enjoying this a little bit. These conditions should continue even though we have a spotless sun. Now also because we are at solar minimum, uh, the cosmic ray flux is a bit higher than it normally would be. So you frequent flyers, and this does include the air crew who fly over 800 hours annually and fly at high altitudes and high latitudes, you are in the marginal range for radiation dose, and this does include prenatal passengers. So please take this into consideration in your flight plans. So the space weather this week is a bit on the quiet side. Now we do have a coronal hole that's rotating in through the Earth's strike zone, and it could bring us a little bit of aurora down to high latitudes, but these coronal holes are closing pretty fast, and the fast solar wind that they send us just don't have the oomph anymore to bump us up to storm levels. So aurora photographers at mid-latitudes, I'm sorry, you're probably going to have to sit this one out. Now amateur radio operators and emergency responders, well, you know, we're getting a little uh, bit more activity in terms of bright regions kind of popping and emerging on the Earth-facing disk, and believe it or not, even without the solar flares happening yet, we are boosting that solar flux just a little bit. So now we're at the kind of low edge of uh, marginal radio propagation, and it looks like these trends are going to continue at least for a little while. So that's good news for you. And then also you GPS users, well, you know, you're getting a mild solar storm, and that's pretty much the only kind of solar storms we're getting right now, and the solar flux still stays reasonable low, so that's great news for you as well because it means that your upper atmosphere is being stabilized even at low altitudes and low latitudes, and so your GPS reception all over the globe should look pretty good. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.